division is deferred until tomorrow. No, we'll deal with the motions first. The Honourable Gentleman should resume his seat. We'll continue with the motions. We come now to motion number four to be moved formally. The whip to move. Thank you. Move. Thank you. The question is as on the order papers. Many other opinions say aye. 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 On the contrary, no. no. Aye. I think objection taken. And I'm grateful to members. Now, points of order. Sir Peter Bottomley. Mr. Speaker, the motion number three, which includes the words welcomes the Commission's support for the Government's efforts to reduce the deficit and set the public finance on a sustainable path, is that an issue which the Opposition could have called for a debate on rather than just a vote? I think it's already been debated in committee, and therefore it is not immediately obvious to me, in response to the Honourable Gentleman's point of order, why a debate would have been sought today. So the answer to the Honourable Gentleman's question, no, I don't require any further point of order. The answer to the question is no. No. Or, order. I've made the point. Order. The Honourable Gentleman will resume his seat. Point of order, Tom Greatrix. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On a point of order, the Administrators Price Waterhouse Co Coopers have announced this evening that the Corriton refinery has been sold, not as a refinery, but as an import and export terminal, meaning most of the 850 jobs there will go. I wonder if you could advise, Mr Speaker, whether you have had any indication from ministers in the Department of Energy and Climate Change that they intend to come to the House to make an urgent statement on the implications of this announcement for UK fuel security and energy resilience. Well, to the Honourable Gentleman for his point of order, but as of now I have received no such indication. I recognise that the importance of the matter to the Honourable Gentleman and to others and what he has said will have been heard on the Treasury bench. And if the Honourable Gentleman, having exercised a modicum of restraint and patience, now wishes to pursue a different point of order, he can do so. The question which I put to Mr Speaker was whether the Opposition could have had this debate rather than whether they should have had the debate. The answer may be the same, but the answer that the House was given was not relevant to the question which I had put. The answer is no. I'm grateful for the linguistic clarification, but the answer is the same. We come now to the petition. Mr Hugh Bailey. Uh, Mr Speaker, our private uh, tenants on low incomes in York face a particular problem because their housing